Okay, welcome everybody. Today we're talking about childcare in Port Phillip and I've got the pleasure of having the three presidents from the childcare centres that are facing closure uh, here with us today. So that's Carolyn Thornton from Eildon Road, Louise Thanks. Heard from The Avenue, and Claire Byrne from the Elwood Children's Centre. So welcome, and thanks for your participation, and thanks for your community campaign. So I'm going to go back a little bit of background. The council is proposing to sell three properties in its portfolio and reinvest in childcare. That's exactly what it says on their website. But basically the plan was to sell three community-run childcare centres that were in converted houses and channel that money into redeveloping a purpose-built larger centre in St Kilda North. Now, when this was mooted last year, it was a shock to the centres and it prompted an intense community backlash, not only about the proposal, but about the process. Now, most recently, after a lot of feedback, the council appeared to change the direction and resolved to explore alternatives to sale and work more collaboratively with the centres. So that's where we're at today. And uh, next week, there's going to come up again in the council meeting. But today, I'd like the first question to go to Louise and say, are you feeling this renewed collaboration? Uh, thanks, Greg. I think uh, in a word, no, not yet. Um, we remain hopeful that it will become a more collaborative process. But to date, we certainly feel like there's a lot of discussions going on about our three services, but not with our three services. Um, and in particular, that's probably being driven largely by council officers rather than councillors. I think there has been a, a small shift in the way councillors are approaching things at the moment. Um, there could be more collaboration. Uh, but certainly from council officers, we are still feeling very much shut out and like this process is happening to us rather than with us. Um, we we welcomed the motion, obviously. Um, I mean, it really, to be frank, it should have been a collaborative process from day one. It shouldn't have required a motion by a council um, to have it become a collaborative process. But I think that's the approach that the council has taken since this was, you know, sprung on us with three hours notice before it was made public. Um, that, you know, the, the officers have a predetermined outcome and they've been working away to get that without really consulting with us because they knew that if they started consulting with us properly and working with us properly, that they might not get the outcome that they wanted um, and that it might become clear that there are alternative options that are completely viable, uh, including the availability of state government funding, which they tried to tell everyone wasn't available, which it actually is. Um, so, yes, we're, we, we're not feeling the collaboration yet. We're hopeful that it will change. There's still time. Um, and, and certainly we um, are looking forward to working with the council to find alternative options to the pure closure of these services um, because, as we know, once they're closed, they aren't coming back. Now, Carolyn, you're presenting a petition um, on Wednesday at the council meeting. Can you tell mm -hmm. us about the petition and the number of signatures and what you hope to achieve with that? That's right, Greg. So we, in January, we commenced a petition through change.org. Um, we've had 3,200 signatures on that petition. So it's really clear that it's not just the 150 families that are currently affected by this proposal at these three centres that have concerns about the proposal. It's the wider community. There's 3,200 people in our community who have concerns about this proposal. We are presenting it at next week's council meeting. Um, and I think it's um, many... Many of those um, signatories have actually contacted their councillors directly and voiced their concerns. As Louise said, once these centres are gone, they're gone. In in a metro Melbourne and suburbs such as St Kilda, Elwood and Balaclava, there are no spare parcels of land to rebuild centres um, when demand increases. And council's own modelling have demonstrated that in 2027, uh, we'll, in our um, areas, our three suburbs, will be 35 to 56 kindergarten places short. And that 
shortfall will increase as we approach 2029 when our um, the Victorian three-year-old kindergarten program is fully um, rolled out. So there's many people in the community that have concerns about that. Well, and next, in, or in the coming weeks, you're meeting with Ingrid Stitt, who's the Minister for Early Childhood um, in the state government. So, Claire, could you tell us, you know, who arranged that meeting, what do you hope to get out of it, and, um, yeah, look, that's what I'd like to know. So. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we've had uh, strong support from our state and federal representatives throughout this campaign. Um, and, you know, at the December 1 meeting when council looked at this proposal and went to an intention to sell, it was largely based on the fact that they'd been told you know, by council officers that there was no state funding available. Um, it was our campaign that contacted state representatives and found out there actually is funding available for our centres. It's just that council hadn't applied. So, you know, we have been lobbying um, and now we are under, you know, we are, we've been told that council officers are meeting with the Victorian School Boards Association to discuss uh, funding, but we can't find out what it is they're discussing. We've been told that, you know, they've made a proposal. We don't get any information about that. So, you know, we are engaging with senior level state government to try and get that information because, as Louise said earlier, we're we're kind of on the outside otherwise. Well, it's, it's surprising to me because I think that if council was to have the best position to get funding, it would work with its community and have a plan. So do they have a plan? Yes. Their plan is to close this and take the $9.5 million plus that the three sites are worth these de- today and funnel that into one of their own services and potentially pocket any of the change. And end up with less places available to the community. Okay. And you're meeting... Have you got meetings with the mayor planned? We have a meeting this afternoon with the mayor. But again, Greg, as I, as I mentioned earlier, these meetings are being pushed by us. Um, we're having to ask for them. We're having to constantly remind people about the fact that they need to keep talking to us. Um, there isn't a lot of proactive engagement from the other side of the fence. Now, I've got a meeting scheduled with... Uh, an interview scheduled with the mayor for next week. So what's the top question you'd like me to ask him about this? When will the motion be put into practice? When will they start collaborating proactively with the three services that are directly impacted by this proposal? Okay. That would be my Sounds like a good question. So I think it would be fair for me to say you're not feeling the love. Right at the moment. <laughs> Not a little accurate reflection, I think, Craig. <laughs> you think I've understated that one? Okay. Maybe, maybe a touch. Yeah. Okay, well, look, um, cooperation is a beautiful thing, so we'll see how your campaign and the collaboration moves ahead. So thanks for your time. Double thanks from me. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> thanks, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. Bye.